What's up, everyone? It's Matt Merzik, and this is Monday, starting a start of week two on the 160th Neo Great Sazabi. So uh, I'm going to finish up doing the, all the cleaning, cleaning up, and test fitting and stuff. So that just uh, is basically finishing up the right arm and the head. Um, so I'm not going to show you that. It's the same process. I'm going to get that done, and then once I'm done with that. I'm going to take it all apart <laughs> and I'm actually going to, um, I usually wouldn't give it a bath now, but it's very messy and dusty in here. So what I'm going to do is once I get this arm fitted and kind of test fitted and stuff, I'm going to take everything apart and I'll show a little bit, but it's basically going to give it a really good scrub with a, a brush and some soap. Um, and then um, today, once I get that arm done and cleaned up, It'll be really taking it apart and start starting from the legs up and working my way up and getting things pinned and magnetized, um, hopefully in their kind of their final state for assembly and stuff. Once I get all the pinning and magnetizing done where I think I needs to be done, then it's going to be a matter of working on lighting. So I've got to talk to Joseph today uh, or some point because I got to start ordering the supplies for the lighting. And we need to talk about that a little bit further. Also need to order the paints uh, for this project. So, um, yeah, so I got to order some stuff. Um, but, um, yeah, so today we finished getting the dry fitting done and then hopefully we'll start actually doing some more finalized uh, pre assembly. So there's, there's multiple stages in a big resin kit like this in the very first stage, which is really time consuming is what I've been doing. This is describing, you know, sanding and all that stuff. So I'll come back when I get that all done and, um, um, and maybe I'll, I think we're going to break out my ultrasonic cleaner too, which I haven't used in years. I bought it when I got uh, into 3D printing, but I got a big ultrasonic cleaner. So I may throw the parts in there with some uh, purple power, uh, which I have, which is just uh, an industrial degreaser. I used to soak these in purple power, but I think if I do a really good scrub with a brush to get, because I need to get all the dust out of all the panel lines, that's going to be the hardest part. Uh, so I need to give them a really good scrubbing. And then um, I think a good bath and the purple power and the ultrasonic cleaner will get all the all the mold release off because this kid does have quite a bit of mold release i, I can feel it it's, it's it's slippery so it's got like an, a kind of an oily feel to it. it doesn't come off in your hands but you can definitely see it and feel it so we have to get all that off otherwise your paint won't stick and you'll have a sad day when you go to mask something and pull the tape off all right so i'm going to continue working on fitting and then i'll come back Okay, so halfway through the day and I've completed the initial cleanup and dry fitting of this piece. So the head's, the head's really wonky too. This is going to go up in there. Um, but yeah, so looking good. So now I'm going to tear this all down. I've been just putting throwing parts in the box here as I go, tearing it down. And I'm going to start, I'm going to clean up my workbench. And then uh, I'm going to get some soapy water and a toothbrush. And I'll show you scrubbing parts. <laughs> We're going to do that. And then throw an ultrasonic cleaner today for a while. And that'll be the end of the day uh, for me today. And then tomorrow on Tuesday, I'll start again working from the feet up, adding, um, I bought some hollow tubes to go in the legs. I'm gonna try to drill out the legs hollow all the way up for, for wiring and stuff, uh, pins, magnets, all that stuff. So more like building uh, and less cleanup. But um, yeah, so the initial cleanup and everything is done. So everything should fit together really really well it's just a matter of pinning things adding magnets where i'm going to need magnets for ease of assembly and disassembly later like the backpack the arms um the torso uh the skirts all that stuff i'm going to try to add little magnets too so i can take it apart and it's easier to ship less chances of things getting damaged uh if you ship it in lots of parts rather than big parts um so that's what we're going to do so i'm going to tear this all down clean my workbench and then we'll be back Okay, so the next exciting step is the first bath of many of the parts. So when I do these big resin gun kits like this, these things get washed a lot because, first of all, there's a lot of uh, mold release on the parts, and also they get handled so much, I just want to make sure they're clean. So on the floor, I've got a bucket of uh, soapy water, just warm soapy water. Over here, I've got a a little bucket of clean water and I've got a gray towel out. You want something? Don't use a white towel. If you've got white resin or a tan towel, use a darker color so you can see all the parts because I have accidentally thrown parts away because I thought I had them all off the towel. So use a contrasting color. So as I wash the parts, I'll throw them in that clean water 
and I'm gonna do the small batches and then I'll go rinse them off, put them out to dry. So there's no, nothing scientific about it. I basically get my brush with some soapy water on it and I scrub. <laughs> and I wanna make sure I really concentrate on any um, panel lines or anything that I did some scribing on, make sure I clean those all out. So I got a really stiff brush here. I, I, I used to have a, um, a little motorized toothbrush, a little cheapy one, but I think I lost it. As long as you have a stiff brush, you can go in and get, try to get as much of that dust out as possible, um, the better. So this is the initial bath. After I get all these parts scrubbed and rinsed and stuff, I'll lay them out to dry overnight. And then tomorrow we'll work on, um, Again, magnetizing and pinning and stuff. But again, there's nothing scientific. Scrub, put in your rinse water. Uh, so like these parts here where I did some scribing on. I'm gonna go, this, the panel line is scribed this way. I'm gonna scrub parallel to that to try to get the bristles in there and get all that residue out of those panel lines. And this, is, this isn't a messy process, it's just a wet process. So. I do have another brush that's got some slightly smaller, but I think the bristles may be a little big on that guy. Let's try this one. This is the brush I typically use for scrubbing pits. And again, these will all get bathed multiple times. Purple Power. Purple Power will be the last like major bath I do before I start putting down primer, because that's the one that will make sure I get all the mold release off. There's a good chance I'll get the mold release off with doing this, but um, I just like using purple power because it's industrial strength. Now, while I do this, where's my scribing tool? That's okay. I was gonna see if that's dust or if that's just marker in there. I'm not sure you can see here where it's black. Okay, yeah, it's just some marker. Because a lot of times you can see where you've gotten as you sand, it's like, it's, like, it's like darker. So as I'm scrubbing, if that cleans out, I'll be able to, typically I'll be able to see it. Again, put in the rinse water. So until once this bucket is full of parts, I'll go rinse those under some warm water and lay them out to dry and do the next batch. Again, nothing scientific. Scrubbing with soapy water. Okay, so that's gonna be it for today. Here are the majority of the parts out drying out after giving them a good scrub. This took me this took me a couple hours to do all this, scrubbing it out. And as I was going, I was actually cleaning out the panel lines with my scrubbing tool as I went. So these are the, most of the parts. And then I've got a bunch of little tiny parts over here. So these are all gonna dry overnight. And then tomorrow I'll start really pinning and magnetizing things. Okay, so it's Tuesday. Um, yesterday I finished up by giving everything a really good scrub in some soapy water and get a rinse and let those dry overnight. And today we're gonna really start solidifying this guy as far as building goes. So again, we're gonna work from the bottom up and work my way up to the top. So uh, I bought myself a drill press, which I have never owned before because <laughs> I wanted to make sure I can drill straight holes because my initial thought process on this is to insert a 3 8 inch, a three eighth inch brass rod into the legs to uh, act as the pin and a conduit for wiring. So I just drilled one hole this morning. I marked the center on the bottom of this part. This is kind of the central core of the leg. And now I'm seeing if uh, I can continue drilling that hole into the other parts to see how it lines up. So even though I drilled the center here, when I drilled straight through, it's not centered on this key. So it's just, this key is offset a little bit from this key. So now the question is, can I continue this hole up through this part successfully? Um, it doesn't look like it's gonna line up. So um, that's a little, interesting problem there 
Uh, ba, 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 ba. Hold on. Let me get my instructions. I'll make sure I've got this going together correctly. This goes here. Where does this go? Like this. Oh, hold on. This goes like this. Okay, it's really important to get these lined up correctly now. So, yeah, okay. So, it should come up through here, up through there. That's my goal. Is I'm hoping I can get this to go all the way through. Let's see. Up through there. And then that's my conduit. And then I'll drill a hole up through here and out into here. Um, so this is where it keys into the waste, the waste part. So this is just a lot of planning for now to get this how I want. So I'm going to do one side. So this keys in here like this. Like that. Um, can I drill a hole? I think I can drill a hole through here. I don't need a I don't need a metal rod through here. I just need a hole in here. Because I'm thinking in the end, um, I'll probably end up gluing these legs on. The whole goal is to have access to hide the wires. And if needed to be in the future, switch out the LEDs if need be, um, if they burn out for whatever reason. So as long as I can get solid wiring from the LEDs up into the center where everything kind of connects, I think we're okay. And then I just have to plan on how do I make the LEDs interchangeable on the outside if need be in the future. Um, again, I don't, I was only lit like two other kits, so I'm not sure what the longevity is of LEDs. It's supposed to be, you know, 10, 20,000 hours is what it's supposed to be, but who knows? Okay. So since I've got this hole drilled here, I'm going to go my drill press and I'm going to use that hole as a guide. And I started with this one because this key is flat on both sides. I was able to put this flat on my drill press and get a straight hole. Now I should be able to do the same thing here. Let me get all the leg parts out so I know how we're going together. And I have to make sure I use all the, I'm going to work on the left side of the leg right now. Uh, so this goes like this. That goes like that, because this is the back. This goes here, like that. Yeah. So I got everything to the side. Uh, about like this and this, and one of these. I'm only concerned about the center core right now. The armor, I'm not worried about. This goes into here like this. That's just going to get a pin. That's going to go in here and that's going to get a pin. This is going to be glued on together eventually. Okay. And then let me get out the armors here, leg armors. Here's going to work a side at a time. Once I get one side down, then I can work it, work on um, getting the other side the same way. Leg part, leg part. Here we go. Okay, so I'm not worried about, so this goes on like this. This is the front. This comes in like this. And this comes in like this. Should get all the left leg parts left. This doesn't matter. Left. Okay. Oh, I know why. All right. Okay, that goes here. Make sure I'm getting my bearings straight here. Let 
this side. There we go. Okay. Okay. I had it on the wrong side. All right. So it's really important to make sure you get these all straightened out. I'm going to label this one as left just in the key. I'll just put a little pencil mark here. L for left. So I know that's the left. Okay. Now this makes sense. Okay, so this is the front. That's the front. This goes here like that. This goes in here like that. Okay. This is the hardest one because it's got a round bottom. So I'll have to, um, and I can't sit it flat. It really, I like to sit it flat on the drill press like this. So here we go. So what I can do is I can go to my drill press and it's just a short drill press. It's not super long, but I can put it on here. I should be able to guide the drill and get a starter hole to this piece. And hopefully that'll line up. So I'm going to do that and I'll do that. Okay, so because my drill press isn't very isn't very long, I basically have to put this up on the drill bit, then slide this part up in, and then start to drill the hole. So now I've got a starter hole there. So I'm going to finish drilling this through, and I'll come back. Okay, so I went to drill this hole, and it got a little close to this edge right here, so it actually came through a little bit. So I kind of moved it over a little bit, so that gives me a little guidance of what I need to do on the next one, the next leg, as far as getting this lined up. So. Um, this is gonna go like this. This is gonna go like that. And let's see if this winds up. I'll have to drill this through. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so that winds up there with that brass rod. And then this should line up here. Let's see if it winds up. shit okay i thought i had it backwards for a second i was like shit <laughs> that was sucked okay so now that's really solid that's not going to go anywhere okay so now what i can do is i can um take this apart and put this on and again, I'm going to put on my drill press and I'm just going to try to, since this isn't flat, I don't think it's going to go in at a straight angle. So I'm going to kind of just kind of hold it and try to push it up and see if I can't get the hole to come through. Okay, so I'm going to do with the hand drill, I think, because I just can't get this drill bit long enough in the chuck on the um, drill press. So I started to do it a little bit, but it's not quite fitting. So this goes like that. And I'm going to just try to drill as straight as I can. At least I can start our hole. And I can come in here by hand and hopefully... time it's a lot of material there we go good thing my hand wasn't on the back side because that would have really hurt okay so now let's see how this goes together again i really don't care if the holes centered or not on that part i just want it to that goes like that the other direction Boom. constantly fit fitting and refitting and just testing things out that's kind of the goal when you're doing this kind of stuff it's constantly checking and refitting now i can see right here that for whatever reason this rod's at a slight angle that's why i was kind of headed this direction so 
obviously I wasn't exactly straight on that first hole for some reason. So I need to check the bed on my, but now I got a central core here, a central core for the leg and that's really solid. Uh, let's see. So now again, just working a piece at a time. I come in here, double check, make sure I'm on the right side. Let's see if we do this drill press. Let's see. We'll be back. Okay, so I took that part of the drill press and I just kind of come up here. Okay, so now I got So now I got the conduit for all the wires to come up through here. And then again, test fit this all together. And the tube I'm only gonna have come up to, right? I'm not gonna have it come all the way up. I'm just gonna have it come up to there because I have it come all the way up, then it won't fit into the, um, the waste, okay? Um. Okay, you come back from the other side on this. Oh, let's hold on. Did I do that wrong? No, okay. <laughs> God dang it. That scared me. I thought I did it backwards again. Oh my gosh. Ugh. That's why you're constantly fitting and test fitting things. So, sorry, I'm not on frame. Okay, I need to come back in this direction a little bit and get that cleaned up. Sorry, I'm just, sometimes I gotta work more than my lap. There we go. Okay. So now I got that rod. That is a really solid central connection for everything. Boom. Uh, was there another piece? Where'd I go? Oh, I haven't drilled it yet. Okay. So the next is going to be getting this to go into this piece down here. So let's get that apart. And this is going to go like this. 
So now I'm going to take this to the drill press. Well, let me see. If, um, and I'm going to come down through here into this piece. All right, so now I got a hole in there. And again, always test fitting. So I'm going to hold that. I feel like this key is oh, actually no, it's pretty good. I'm going to come back in with the hand drill and just kind of clean that up a little bit. Okay. So I just know that this piece is a little wonky, but we'll, when we clamp this all together, it should be fine. There's that. And then again, this piece goes on. Every time I drill a hole, I go back and just retest it every time. Boom. So we're looking good. This is going to really get him solid on his feet. And then while I have this kind of put together like this, I can test the fit of the armor and everything just to make sure that we're, everything is still working well. <clears throat> uh, let's see. This one. And it's really these big armors that are the ones that kind of are, de are dependent on the, the fit of this core. Because it wraps around that, this big square key, which in turn, um, determines how the other armor lines up on it. Okay, so that's looking good. And then when that's on, this comes in and fits right against that part. Again, I'm just trying to determine if I, I don't think I should glue these armors on. I think they need to be removable again, in case we got to do LED work in the future. So I'll probably magnetize these. Um, I could probably ship them with the armors on, but I think um, the smart thing to do is make it removable. The first one I did, I made it all removable. I don't know why I did, I just did. That part can get glued on and this will get glued in eventually like that. But these I think need to be, have the capability of removing. So I can put some magnets um, in here. I actually might, so in the first one I did, I think I might, I have to go back and look. I think I can get away with gluing a lot of this together before I paint. Um, yeah, I think I'll do that. I think that's smarter. Again, I may have a little more masking if I go and do some detail work in here, but I think the smart thing to do, again, is to do as much gluing, except with the exception of this top part, I'll leave that part off. Um, but I think if I, well, and this part and the armor, because that goes red. But I think if I can glue this central, this central core together and um, this part on, I think that's a smart thing to do because that will just make it easier. It'll just, it'll just solidify them um, at this point. Okay, so now the tricky part is uh, this piece right here because it's at an angle. So if I come in here, I drill a three inch, inch hole like this, it's going to come out where I don't want it to come out. So on that one, what I think I'm going to do again, I think if I glue this, if I get this kind of solidified and I get this glued into place, get this epoxied in 
Again, I'll have a little masking to do for this part because I think I want that a separate color than the rest of the frame. And also another fitment thing on this part is that when this is on the when this is when this is glued in here. Okay, I see. Um, so the interesting thing about this is that this part is actually recessed a little bit into the armor, so it actually sits on this part. It doesn't sit flat like this. This is recessed a little bit. And it's confirmed here that that's recessed a little bit because when I put this part into here, and if I try to sit this flat, this, this edge right here um, comes up a little bit. I could just, I could just file that down. I may do that. Cause I'm not sure if I should, yeah, I think I'll do that. Okay, so again, this is me thinking out loud. So if I come in here and come in here with the drill press, that's going to come in and put this at a weird angle. So I'm going to think, I may do this by hand. Where's my starter hole? through your hand you dumbass which I tend to do okay so that's where that comes out So it's surgery day on this guy. Okay, so now that lines up there. Uh, this goes on like this. I mean, technically that does go in there to a point. Let's see, let's do some more test fitting. I don't really care about this part right now. When I glue, I glue up, I glue two parts at a time. So I like glue this, and then I could go down and do the next part. I don't try to glue it all at once. Okay, so hold on. So this is just a low or slow process here, just working this out. That's the front. That's the back. Okay, so that won't work because the angle of that hole is a little off. I thought I might be able to get that to go in, but we'll see. Let me get my little, there's my mallet. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna tap this a little bit with the mallet. hitting okay I'm gonna make this hole a little bit bigger I'd really like to be able to glue the brass rod onto this part that give me some really nice um, a solid contact point but I'm not sure it's gonna line up because of the angles Not the end of the world. Because as I tap this in here, I can see where it's hitting. Along this side here. So I'm just going in here by hand. I'm I'm, I'm going to try to get this brass rod to line up in this hole a little bit. Yep. 
again, just to give you a really good foundation for the legs. So I have it going in the right way. Okay, it's still not. Yeah, it's just because that rod's coming in at an angle. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to play with this off camera. And once I get this where I want, I'll come back and we'll probably do some gluing. Okay, so I'm gonna start doing some uh, sub assemblies on this leg. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna glue these two parts together without the tube in there. Cause the tube actually goes into this part a little bit, but just a little bit, just a, just a, a hair. And that kind of gives me the bottom, bottom point of that tube. I went ahead and hollowed this out quite a bit so that when I put this in the foot, I can drill down and uh, get a hole for the wires. So I'm not sure exactly where this hole is gonna end up on the bottom of the foot. I don't think we really care because again, you're not gonna see it, but it's gonna end up somewhere like right in this area. Um, unfortunately, it's not like gonna be in the center of this. It's just, cause this kit wasn't designed for wiring. So the plug gonna kind of be like in this area, which again, I don't think it's the end of the world cause we're not gonna see it. But uh, ideally I would like it to have it centered here but i don't know how i'd go about doing that to be honest i guess i could try drilling a hole here and then drilling a channel but then that's just just more you know wiggle room and stuff um for the plug and i don't know if that's a good idea because i so if you look here the center of this key lines up right about here and that's where the plug's going to go um so i think it's just better to put this in Actually, what I need to do first is I need to put this and I need to drill a hole into the foot so I know where that is and then I can start gluing together. So I'm going to do that and then we'll come back. This is my brain, my brain working in 20 different, different directions at one time. Okay, so I drilled a hole through the bottom of the foot and it kind of ended up right about there, which isn't ideal, but again, we're not going to see it, so I think it's going to be okay. So now I'm going to mix up some 15 minute epoxy. Um, normally I use five minute, but I really want this to be um, super strong, so I mix up some epoxy here. And I'm gonna just do a piece at a time. So I'm gonna glue this, so while this is drying, I'll put these pieces aside and I'll work on um, putting the tube in on the other leg. And this is, I don't have to use a lot of this right now, this is just to hold these two pieces together. So in about an hour, this will be pretty uh, solid. Five minute would be about um, so I'm using when I'm doing something like this where I need a lot of structural integrity, 15 minute epoxy is the way to go. It just has stronger holding power than the five minute. And you don't want to use super glue, it's too brittle. So then the tricky part will be drilling into the brass tube from where I want to put insert the wires. So just to make sure this is mixed up really well. And we're gonna cut this key. Inside of this key, I'm gonna try to keep the glue out of the hole for the brass rod, but I'll, I'll clean it up. I want some thinner if I need to.
Okay, yeah. I just want to make sure I put this on the right key. <laughs> oh crap, did I do that? I, shit. Okay. Son of a bitch. Okay, hold on. I think I used 15 minutes because I just put that on the wrong key. I don't want to glue this spot yet. Let me clean this out. Okay. Sometimes you do that, you make a little snafu. So we get some thinner and clean this out quickly. Not that I have to rush too fast because it's 15 minutes, but yeah, it makes me mad. They did that. I was thinking to myself, I shouldn't have to clean that spot out yet. And that's because I put the epoxy in the wrong key. So just make sure you clean that out really well. So you don't have fitment issues. You gotta put that part back in there. Okay, that's fine. I need to put it in here, duh. Typical Polish move. Okay, so this is the front. Okay, this is the front. Ugh, yeah, I totally fucked this up. God dang it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Okay, well I gotta remix my epoxy because I totally put them on put it all in the wrong key. It's not the end of the world since it's again I'm using 15 minutes, so it's not gonna kick off too quick. But now I gotta mix up some more. <clears throat> this out too. We just start over. It's a good way to start the assembly of this piece. Okay. I need to glue this to this that way. Right? Right. Okay, so I need glue. I, well, I did have the glue in the right. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm having some major brain malfunction right now. All right, let's do that again. Let's get another cup and try this again. Brain fart galore. saw that I missed a mold line there so I can clean that up too before we glue any more stuff together. There'll be some mold lines and stuff that I probably missed in my initial cleanup but I think I got probably like 90% of it because I was really diligent and took my time cleaning stuff up. Okay so before I mix that up I want to make sure I clean out okay, this key all the way. And this is why everything gets bathed several times because you're just working with the pieces and they get dirty and fingerprints and stuff on them. So it's just a constant you finish a major step and then you give it a bath. And once I start painting, then uh, the last bath I'll get is right before I put prime, uh, right before I start painting because after I prime everything and sand it and then prime it again, we'll do a final check for any errors and stuff. And then we'll, okay. Before I start getting off kilter here, this needs to get glued like that. 
because this goes in like this. Okay, so make sure we do it right this time. And then once that's cured, I can put the um, next part in with the metal tube and just work my way up the rod, the metal tube, gluing each piece in at a time. So each leg will take several hours to glue because uh, I put a part in and I clamp it, put a part in and clamp it. I might be able to put a couple, I'll even put the next two parts on together, we'll see. I usually don't like to clamp over long areas because then it tends to um, bend a little bit, it doesn't stay completely straight, so we'll see. Okay, so now we got this straightened out. I'm not putting any pins in this part because that the brass tube does go into this part just a little bit by about half an inch, which is just enough to give it some stability and some strength. Okay, so that's right. And then this key here. And I'll get some ooze out, so I'll just clean them up with some thinner. And there, this goes like this, this goes like that. Okay, now I got a lot of ooze out, which is fine. I'm just gonna clean it up with some thinner. And I'll just have a little masking to do on that part down there, but it's okay because I'm, I'm probably have some masking on the frame in general anyway. So it's not the end of the world. And now I do want to clean out all the epoxy in this hole. Once I get this, I'll give it a clamp. So I'm just cleaning out any of the epoxy that came out, and then some came up through here. It's kind of So if you can do sub assemblies before painting, that's kind of ideal. I'd rather do this now. And I think I did this on the, on the first one I did. I, I assembled the, the frame of the legs and glued, got it all glued together and then painted them as one piece, if I remember correctly. I got epoxy all over my fingers. right there to get in that little bit who's out and kind of just go back in there with the drill bit after that's um, cured and clean up that hole a little bit okay so I'm gonna get a clamp on this get some light pressure on it just so I make sure I got nice contact and then anything else that uses that I clean up well, I got the clamp on Okay. All right. First two parts are glued. <laughs> so I'm going to let this sit for a while. I'm going to continue on the other leg with all the process I just did with drilling the holes and stuff, and hopefully I get them a little more centered this time. You know, the first one's always kind of a, the test to see how things uh, work and uh, plan of action. So I'm going to put all the right, the left leg parts to the side and then kind of do the same thing on the right leg parts. Okay, so I got the right leg 
drilled out and put together that went way smoother than this first one just because I kind of knew what I was doing that second time around and things lined up a little bit better. So I'm gonna put that to the side now so I don't get confused with the parts. And I'm going back to the left leg now. So uh, this part's had oh, about an hour and a half to, to, to dry as I worked on those parts. So again, now I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna work up the leg, gluing these on. And as I'm going, I'm checking my, my work just to make sure I don't have any thing that I can't get to sanding wise once this is together. And so far, really good. You can see all the scribe work I did it turned out really, really nice. So I'm glad I spent the time to do that. So again, I'm going to glue this on and I'm going to go ahead and insert the rod as far down as it'll go. And it comes into this part just a little bit so you can kind of see it sticking in there. And that'll give me a nice, solid connection to these parts. Now, again, before I glue anything, I like to run through my clamping process so I know I'm going to clamp. So I think I'm going to need one. I may just need one. It's a little harder to clamp with the uh, brass tube in place because the trick is you want to get even pressure. So I put one there. Uh, I have another thing. This is too big. Do one there. And then come from this side and do one here. And I don't need a ton of pressure, but what I'm looking at is this gap right here. I wanna make sure that that gap is even. So this side needs a little more pressure. This side needs a little less. Just like that. Okay, so I'll epoxy this and clamp it like this and put that to the side. And then we'll just work our way up. Now I'm still contemplating whether or not I'm gonna go ahead and epoxy this part on because this goes red. Again, my initial thinking is it's better to go ahead and get the legs solidified and have a little bit of masking later because what I really don't wanna do is have everything painted nicely and then try to go back and glue in and mess up the paint with glue. So that's always kind of my, my, my thinking in the foreground. Okay, so when I, as I'm thinking to myself, after I get done painting, if I start gluing things together, where am I gonna have problems where I could have ooze out and a lot of cleanup and stuff like that? So I think it's better to, again, get the legs solidified and have a little more masking later to self uh, prevent and damage to the paint. So uh, I'm not gonna show gluing this. It's the same process, add some epoxy and clamp it, but that's what we're gonna do. Glue this, clamp it, and then work our way up. Okay, as I'm thinking, I haven't glued this yet, but as I'm thinking again about lighting, so this is, so I got uh, four thrusters in the leg. I got these three back here, and then there's one that comes on the side here, uh, right here. So those are the four thrusters that get lit under here. So this one's relatively easy because I can drill a channel up through here and into he and then in, in through there into the brass tube, and that gives me a channel for those wires. Um, Fishing this all through is going to be interesting. <laughs> so it'll be fun to see if I do how I do that. Uh, and this one's a little more challenging because uh, hiding the wires. Again, once the armor is on, um, this comes in here like this. Any wires are going to be up in this cavity. So I'm thinking what I do is these two are actually pretty simple because I can come up and drill out the backside here. There's some panel line detail, but I don't really care about that. This one's a little more trickier because it's not really centered up on that key. So I need to drill a channel through here and then out the back somehow. So I'm thinking, um, I'm not sure how big of a, a hole I can put there, but again, I got to think of the gauge of the wire and all that fun stuff. So I'm thinking I drill a channel through here, out the back, I wish I had the LEDs here because I don't have them yet. Because my initial thought, like the LEDs, I'll probably hot glue in. That way uh, they're not permanent. Um, but then again, how do I rewire them if I need to do it? Anyway, I want to be able to take the, like as I keep saying, I want to be able to, if, ne if necessary, if it needs new LEDs, you can go back in there and fix it. Um, it it'll be challenging to do, but I want to be able to have that capability. So that's just, again, me thinking out loud. Um, wire routing. So that's kind of what my thought process is. Channel here, out the back of these things and kind of come in maybe through back here or something. Uh, we'll see. 
Alrighty, so as I work on getting these glued together, so on the left leg, I now have this all glued together. You see it's a little shiny, it's because I go in there with some alcohol and I try to clean out the epoxy and it just leaves like a little sheen on it. Don't worry about that, that gets all covered up later when I wash it and prime it. So I am gonna go ahead and glue these top uh, leg parts on. Uh, so this goes on like this. Okay. Oh, hold on. Nope. It goes on like this. Yep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm constantly paranoid I'm going to glue something wrong. Okay. So here's the left hip joint. So in order to get this the right length, I'm just going to kind of set it up here and eyeball where I need to cut it. So I need to cut it right about here. So I'm going to put a mark on there and get out the Dremel and cut that off. Sorry. My phone is in the way of me opening my drawer to my markers and stuff. So I just eyeball this. Right about there. Uh, I used to have a pipe cutter, but I don't, I don't actually, I do have a pipe cutter somewhere. So I'll use a pipe cutter and I'll cut that off. And then I'll, uh, I'll use a file to uh, deburr the edge. So I'm gonna cut there. Let me find my pipe cutter, we we'll back. Okay, well, surprisingly, it was where it's supposed to be. <laughs> anyway, um, the hell's this from? Oh, this. Surprisingly, it was where it's supposed to be. But many times my tools aren't where it's supposed to be. So this is a little hobby size uh, pipe cutter. I should be able to cut this. I think this goes up to half inch. And if you don't know how this works, it's pretty simple. You put it on the pipe where you want to cut. I'm going to put it just a hair below that mark. And you tighten up till it's just snug and you turn it, tighten it up, turn, tighten it up, turn. You just keep doing this until it cuts. This is a nice clean way to cut a pipe and you don't create sparks or Super rough edges. And just like that. All right, so I will sand that a little bit with a file. Uh, somewhere I got a round file. There we go. Almost not round. So it's just a round file. We come in here and just kind of deburr this. And I can even use my sanding stick from earlier. Those rough edges. I didn't. I should have done it down here too on the factory edge, but it's okay. I can do it up to the leg. Okay, so now let's put this on. See if it's the right length. Left side. Go in here. Nope. Helps you put it on the right way, like that. Left side. And it's perfect. So sorry, my lights, my lights all wonky, and my awesome camera work as usual. So now that brass tube comes just up to the edge there, and um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish gluing this leg together, and then uh, I'm gonna finish the other leg. And once I get that back with that, we'll start working on pinning all these other parts on. And uh, today with the leg solidified and possibly the skirts. So the legs are taking a little while because I got to make sure that these are really strong and that everything's lined up correctly. So it's just a, again, drill, test fit, drill, test fit over and over and over again as you go, make sure everything's lined up correctly. All right, well, it took the morning, but I got the legs all 
haul it out with the tubes and glued together. These are going to dry for, oh, I'll let dry for 30, 45 minutes. I'll kind of clean up my area a little bit and then we'll start pinning all the other detail parts onto here. And then uh, I think what I can do right now is I can actually um, drill a hole through the waste for wires because um, again, I'm trying to think I'm going to hide the wires. If I can kind of come up through the middle and let me get the waste parts real quick. Where's that part and where is the... Um, no, where is it? Oh, here it is. Okay, so this comes in like this. I'm thinking I might, I might, I don't know. I might glue this on too, because this is all pretty much gonna get the same color and drill a hole through here for wires. And then hollow this out up here, so. That's my plan. So I'm gonna drill a hole through the hip here. Hopefully I can do wires up through there. And then I gotta think about the side skirt um, wires, where those can go. So let me think about that. But right now I'm gonna drill a hole here and possibly a hole there. Okay, so I drilled a hole through the hip joint and up through here, and now I have a channel for wires from the legs at least. Um, so that's where I am right now. Okay, so now that I have the center core of the legs solidified, I can so go in and start refine, refine fitting some of these pieces. So for the armor, for example, since I want to be able to take this off if need be, um, I've just sanded this, these two little areas down a little bit because although the armor went on pretty well, it was kind of hitting there a little bit, so I want to give it a little more clearance. So now these can come off uh, on, an, on and off easier if need be. Um, there shouldn't be a reason to take these off, but because you'll just scrape paint. Uh, but now that have, now these armors are nice and solid, they're not, before they were all wobbly when I was doing the test fitting, because again, nothing was pinned or glued. But now that I have those in there, and now what I can do is I can sand this face flat, because there's a little lip right there. And that's important that that's flat, because when this piece comes in, it sits against those two armors, and I want to make sure that's a nice, and a, a nice clean fit. Um, and also, this part right here, isn't going down all the way, which tells me that this is a little high. So once I get that sanded flat, and again, I'm just taking my sanding stick with some 240 on it. Actually, I need to make a new sanding stick. This one's pretty used up. I'm not sure if it's showing up in camera, but there's a shiny spot right here. Um, and that's telling me that that's low and that's not lining up. So I'm gonna sand this smooth. I'll do that on both legs. And once this gets in there, then I can kind of fit that part and vice versa. And this piece, um, so we'll definitely get the legs all pinned and solidified today, and then I'll continue to work on the waist. We'll see how far we get, but this has taken uh, half the day just to get this far. But yeah, so I'm going to sand this flat, do that on the other leg, and then we'll start pinning some of these pieces in. Okay, so I've started to do some pinning. So I added a 1 16th inch brass rod to this armor, which pins into this piece here, like that so. Uh, that'll probably get glued on there later. And then this is gonna get pinned here. And that lines up nicely with the exterior armor. So let's do that real quick. I was using my drill, but I was getting a little inaccurate uh, with my pinning. So the pin vise, again, it's the same process for all pins. Just take, a, take my pin vise and just kind of start a hole. I don't go all the way. I can, this one can go all the way because this is gonna be my reference hole for the next, uh, where the next hole's gonna go. And I just drill it in. And you wanna clean that out every once in a while. Uh, I can go in here with the drill bit a little bit. If I had a magnet small enough, I could probably magnetize it, but I don't have anything that small. And then uh, blue tack. Let's get some blue tack. You want to kind of warm it up so it's tacky, otherwise it won't stick. And I 
I just push it in there and I'll use a Q-tip to kind of get it down in that hole. And then I take this, put it in the place and give it a little push. Okay, and then the blue tack. Sometimes these keys are a little deeper. So you need a little more blue tack to register put that in. And then I give it a push. Oops. And then you can see the little peg of blue tack. And that's where this hole will go. And I just give it a little start and then pull the tack out and then continue drilling the hole. some brass rod like this and I like to scuff the end like that and then I put some glue on the pin and then insert it It's all the way down. Take a damp Q-tip, clean off the excess glue. I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna cut it a little bit longer than I think I need. I don't wanna cut it short. And I'm gonna hit a little zip kicker on it. Like that. So yeah, I washed all these parts yesterday. Now they're gonna get all dirty again. And it's gonna be too long, but that's okay. Okay. Rather have it too long, I have to cut it a little more as I go. So what I can do there is I can just drill the hole a little bit deeper and then we should be good to go. Unless I start hitting that brass tube then I can't go any deeper. <laughs> to get a better fit. That's why I like using the 1 16th because it's flexible. It allows me to bend it a little bit and if I need to get a better fit or if it's the hole's off just a little bit. There we go. So that's pinned into place. So that's on pretty good. So I'm gonna pin uh, this part on and then there's a piston detail here and I gotta pin the thrusters on, but that's the basics of pinning. So I'm gonna do that to the legs and then we'll take a look at them when they're together. Okay, okay, <clears throat> excuse me. As I work on pinning, I'm also, again, thinking lighting. <laughs> and you're sitting here and say that a lot. So on the side thruster, I went ahead and drilled out a hole. Uh, I'm not sure what size I did. What size is this? Uh, 5 16 I think it is. Basically the same diameter as the uh, thruster that goes in there. 
Uh, what is this? 730 seconds? Hell no. 730 seconds. Uh, the thruster can still plug in there. I may have to change that. And I drilled into here. And I drilled it through here. So no wires can go up through here and out. And now I'm drilling the hole in the side of the leg right here. Where that goes, I got two little spots for some pins. This will get glued on eventually. Now the tricky part is gonna be when I hit the brass rod. Hopefully I can drill through into that brass rod relatively easily. So let's give that a shot. Okay, there's the brass rod. And I did. You can see it's pointing to grab there. So it's goes into the brass rod we put in earlier. Check down there and make sure I don't have anything that's, I'm gonna have to probably get like a long <clears throat> file or something to maybe try to file some of this down because <clears throat> one of my main concerns is uh, rough edges on the brass and the wires getting um, messed up. So, so that's gonna go there. Let's go and throw my pins in, hopefully they line up. I just need a little, just some little short pins. I don't need anything too drastic on this. Which is kind of really to time, temporary hold that place while I work. Process, little glue, wipe off the excess. Cut. Yeah, one may be enough. I may not need the other one. Although I did I made a hole for two. Yeah. One's more than enough to hold that in place. Oh, but we'll put the second one in there since I have it. Might as well use it. And I may not, if it's strong enough, I may not even glue this in the end. It's pretty, it's got a pretty solid fit right now. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm gonna look. So I got a long um, metal file I can stick down in there and kind of clean up any rough edges on that brass. All right, that's gonna be a nice solid fit there. All right, so that part's pinned and channeled for wiring. Again, I may not need to glue that on in the end. I may just leave it as is that way. If, or again, if I need to take it off later or something, I can. Now this part is the wiring is gonna be uh, interesting. So I got to figure out how to channel that. How to, what's the armor's on? Where's a good way, where's a good spot to hide, to hide that wiring as best as possible? Let's see if I have room back there. I think I might have room back there. Let's see. Yeah, looks like I've got room right underneath where the armor. I need a marker. I think 
this one's dead. Right here. So I've got room right there for wires. So I'm going to drill a hole in the brass there, or into the back of the leg and into the brass rod there. I may make that bigger because I've got three LEDs I've got to fish through there. So maybe a quarter inch. this on. Let's see how that works. How much space I've got there. Okay, so a quarter inch is the size I can use. Yeah, oh, that's going to work nicely. I could have come down a little bit lower in that hole, so I know on the next leg I can bring it down a little bit lower and maybe have a slightly bigger hole. Slightly bigger hole. Actually, what I think I'm going to do I'm going to take this quarter inch and I'm just going to wallow, wallow it out a little bit on the downside. So I'm just taking the drill bit and I'm just pushing down on it. Just make that hole a little bit bigger. There we go. Again, we're not going to see it once the armor's on. That gives me a little more room for wires from those three um, cluster lights. Okay. Bueno. That looks good. Now for these guys. I'm thinking I come up here and then out the back. That's what I probably need to do there. Can't do quarter inch. And I don't know what size LEDs I'm going to use. Maybe probably three, probably three millimeter. Be my guess. I don't know. I'm looking to see how big this hole is for the thrust. So I'd like to be able to still use this, the stock hole. Dresser to plug into. Okay, so I'm going to come in. I'm going to drill this hole first. Again, there's a little detail there, but we're not going to see it. This drill bit's really dull. I must have done something with it. Three sixteenths. I don't use that size very much. I may not drill at all. Well, I'm going to try to use this 360. It's really dull. Um, I may go down one to a size I don't ever use 1164. This will be a sharp. I'm not sure why I don't sell dull. More or less, I'm gonna use that size. There we go. I like to drill this top hole first because that tells me um, I'm coming up to the other. Okay, sorry, I started to come out that side, so I'm done. I won't go any further. I can see my depth. Again, just going slow. Yeah, I'm ready to do 
the same thing on this side. Came through, I'll fix that. came through there. I'll have to do a little putty work right there. Not the end of the world. Okay, this guy. The reason I didn't do a hole for the LEDs here is because I got the two other wires that I need to take care of. So this one, um, technically I can just come all the way straight to the top. I could have done that too. Okay. Okay, I've changed my mind. I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna fill that in there. Cause now we can come to the out of the top of this one. And that's a good spot for the wires to come out. A little putty work to do. It's not the end of the world. Okay. All right. So it's not pretty, but I'm going to fix it. Uh, so now I can have the wires coming out of the top right there. And once all the armor is on, it should be a clean look. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then some, and then from underneath, cause I think we're gonna have a mirror underneath, under, underneath this to look up underneath. You might see a little wire here and there, but it's not going to be obvious. So I think that's going to work out well. Okay. So what I'll do is to fix this. I'm just going to putty over these flat spots. Um, and I'll putty over this hole too. I'll fix this part. But now I know what to do the other one. No, it's no big deal. So I'm just going to just going to fill in these spots and sand them flat. Um, it's a little bit of a detail, but it's okay. But that'll be perfect for the wiring. So that's planned out for that leg. Uh, the only part I got to pin on this one now is uh, this and a little side support. And then this leg is all pinned together. Okay, so here's one leg all pinned together. So you can see what this looks like. So all the detail up underneath. Again, the wires out of these guys will be hidden up underneath all that stuff. And the wires for this, for this thresher goes through this part and into the side and uh, there we go. So I'm gonna do the other leg and then we'll get them standing up and then we'll address the waist. All right, so we've got a couple more hours in the day here. So I got him back on his feet and now he doesn't wobble like he was before. Uh, the only thing I have blue tacked on are these two armors. Those don't stand without any uh, glue or anything. There's really nowhere to pin them. So those are just blue tacked on. But now you get a sense of how he's supposed to stand. There's no wobbling. This little armor here, I'm gonna work on this a little bit later, I think it's um, it's a little tight, so I may do some more sanding to get some more uh, clearance there. But otherwise, everything fits really, this like fits perfectly. This one is a little, a little off, so I'm gonna work on that a little bit later. Okay, so now we're gonna move up to the waist a little bit. And I mentioned before, I've got a hole coming at the top here uh, for wire, so I put some blue tack up here. I'm gonna go ahead and push this down, like so as I normally do. And I've got a, a spot to drill a hole. And uh, I may go through this on the drill press. Actually, I think I'm gonna do that. I'll be back. Okay, so here's a good exa example why you shouldn't use super glue in some things. I thought it'd be okay on this part. So I had super glued these halves 
together uh, the other day, but the drill bit caught it and it just broke the glue joint because it's just uh, brittle. So now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pin it and epoxy it and clamp it and let that dry really well. Uh, I did manage to get that hole drilled, but I need to go back in and pin and glue this these back together and let that dry. So I'm gonna use epoxy this time and just make sure that we have got a good joint. So when that's done, I'll be back. Okay, we're gonna call this work in progress done. This way it just doesn't get uh, too long, but I uh, got the legs, like I said, I got all the legs pinned. Uh, I went ahead and pinned these, there's three parts in here that are all pinned together to that part. Uh, so um, I think I showed that I did go ahead and drill a, a epoxy. Um, yeah. Went ahead and epoxy this together, that's still drying. I drilled a quarter inch or a half inch hole there, which lines up with the hole there for the wires. So that was a little bit bigger just so I've got more room to work. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna call this work in progress done. And the next one I'll start, I'll show you working on adding magnets and pins and stuff for those skirts and all those parts. So we'll just kind of keep working our way up. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for the next one.